Yeah. Beautiful. Here we are. Uh, only two of us today. Team is on holidays in a way. That's not true. Not everyone is. But uh, you have a wonderful Christmas sweater. I don't have the sweater. I'm not. I'm not delivering on that component. I do have a little tree in the background. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's more Christmas. It's almost. I have a dog. Not a real. Dog. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost. It's not quite there, but it almost looks like it could be a, a big tree, but it's not. Mm-hmm. It's a fake yeah. small tree. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, uh, I, it's my it's my duty to turn it on and off every night. So that's been uh, quite. It's a, too much to be honest, but yeah. it's there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, anyone who's tuning in, I appreciate this. It's weird when I look at. I just look at the YouTube. Uh, the, the YouTube um, uh, stats from some of the videos, and it's like different, you know, different um, views. Like last one was much more viewed than uh, the previous ones, and it's like literally just a share, you know, yeah. what I mean? that 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 actually does that. It doesn't mean anyone's watching for an extended period of time, but it's a nice way again for us to review, reflect, uh, talk through some of the things that we're seeing for the week, and do it in a way that's. Um, you know, we can have very transparent conversations ourselves, but also share with uh, anyone who's following this journey. So, um, and you know, even last night, again, it was one of those moments where it's like sometimes it's like, is, is this worthwhile? I always look forward to it, but as you're sort of prioritizing time, but one of the, a, a, a guy who's extremely talented, uh, he's like wants to be an advisor to our company and he, you know, loves, loves the team. And it's because he's been able to tune into a couple of the videos and see that we're good people doing good things and builds up that, uh, you know, understanding of the dedication and, and, and intelligence there so uh i've gone off the rails already i'm tyler uh nice to be here uh and um what am i thinking about this week quickly um it's data visualization i'm, a, I'm in a i'm in a hunt on youtube right now one last one i shared in slack uh Michal was the, like it was amazing just quickly she did like um, a visualization of all the wars since the 1900 and like sort of the impact of them but she used the um poppies to um sort of make the impact about it it was just incredible basically that blend of data science and and art uh and like the emotional impact that it could have so that's it for me i'm obsessed with that stuff i'm going to take a deeper dive uh, over the holidays and looking forward to bringing more data visualization uh into uh speak in the new year awesome um no i mean i I saw you shared a couple of a couple of videos so I'll add them to my weekend watch oh, watch list. Um, so that'll be fun. Uh, so hey, everyone, Nihal here, Digital Strategist at Speak. Uh, this week's been really more of a reflective week, uh, thinking of, you know, the, the year that we just had, uh, thinking of what our next steps look like. And yeah, excited to discuss some of those, those thoughts here today. And you know, when you post, it's, it's hard. Yeah, everyone is, loves their own stuff. So it's like, you don't, you're not required to watch those videos, uh, but they are interesting. And it's also like this decision that you make sometimes, which you know, I've said that before, but it's like, okay, I've got 25 minutes. I can watch a video. Do I watch? Yeah. Do I watch uh, Tom Segura uh, and tell jokes or do I watch, uh, you know, how to do data visualization? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, go, I, 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 I exactly, yeah, exactly, in, at the same time. Um, yeah. uh, but I ended up on the good side of that the last few days, just uh, you know, some some deeper dives myself, and even some of the discussions that that we've had around the, you know, reflecting back on on twenty twenty one, which is one of the things that you know that you sort of brought up as a topic here of like reflecting on the things that you're doing right, and then also the goals and the ambitions and the visions that you have, and. Um, I've talked about this before, but just with, I find with software, I find with anything in life, it's just like it lags. What you want to accomplish has a lag time before it gets done. And and when you get stressed or frustrated, it's when you think that it should happen sooner. So you have to like get over that. Like so much of our pain and suffering comes from just wanting something to happen now when probably the timing's not right, or maybe you haven't put in the effort uh, in the concentrated way to, to make it happen. But from, from what my perspective and you and I had talked about it, one of the things that I really want to see is this sort of output side of speak this year. And that's validated by obviously my, our own desires to see things beautiful come out of our system, but now more and more conversations with customers and opportunities to differentiate our, our, our product and our system. So um, I guess I'll ask you, like, you've got a couple things, general year in review. I know the whole team's not here, mm-hmm. but um, you know, just a couple things that are on top of your mind for this. You sort of have said, what are we thankful for? What went well? Uh, what we look forward to. And I like your one question sort of now I'm placing you, but like top three speak moments or milestones of the year. Mm-hmm. 
uh, so I guess general year in review is just, you know, uh, the past two years have obviously been a weird uh, mix of, of, oh, this is a, the new normal too. Oh, things are back to the old normal too. Oh, back to the new normal. Um, so uh, I thought it would be good to just maybe, yeah, like list one thing that we're thankful for, uh, something that went well either personally or professionally, and then just what we're kind of looking forward to in 2022. Um, and once again, that could be professionally or personally, right? Because uh, I, I feel like sometimes those can be somewhat intertwined depending on uh, what your goals and uh, plans for the future hold. So, I, I mean, if I guess if I were to start, uh, yeah, go ahead. the first thing I'm thankful for, uh, I'd say is just the fact that no one I know got COVID. I think that's a pretty big mm-hmm. one. Um, I did get COVID, but uh, yeah. oh, you did. Oh, right, right, right. Wait, did you get tested? <laughs> that was before you met me. Uh, uh, okay. That was in January 2021. Oh, never, but... never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, buddy. <laughs> we all... Oh no! I mean, technically, we and didn't know Axel. each other. We didn't know and each other. We didn't know each other then. <laughs> that's so, true. That's so it true. Doesn't... I'm sorry to rain on your parade there. <laughs> Damn it! Um, well, no one I knew before April <laughs> had COVID, <laughs> so. Um, that's that's one um second one is you know i d- despite all the um you know like struggles people might be facing uh, you know like i i'm lucky and like privileged enough to have been able to you know like keep keep working uh you know even like getting like a, a house like a place for myself um you know which is like a life milestone um which surprisingly is something that has happened for multiple team members this year which is great um and yeah what went well uh i i think this, this this was a great year uh from a personal standpoint i think you know what we were able to even just in the past eight nine months uh you know since i joined uh just in terms of like the direction we've taken the company the um aspirations and how we kind of have focused down slowly over the over the past couple of months uh I, th- I think we've done that really well like there were like bumps and obviously we've had like um you know like different roadblocks that have popped up but i think overall uh, we're in a better position now than uh, and once again i don't know what the years prior were but at least just based on my uh we're, my perception we're in a better position now than we were at the start of the year or at the start of quarter two for example which I think is great, at least, you know, speaking from the software and um, product perspective, where we've done quite a bit of work to uh, to improve everything that we're trying to give to our customers and clients and the community in general. Um, and what we look forward to uh, along those veins, I think just whittling down, just drilling down even more uh, in terms of where we're going, what we're trying to achieve and just you know trying to see what we can do with the team to just keep growing and uh having significant impact on um both our customers lives as well as like our lives in terms of um you know personal achievements um success and satisfaction so beautiful i appreciate you sharing Uh, Thankful. It's actually really nice. Monica and I pretty consistently have built in a sort of like a pr- practice of sort of gratitude at the end of the day, just saying a couple of things that we're thankful for. And a lot of times it's, the things are similar, but then there's new things that pop up or come into your sort of awareness that day. And I think just taking a moment to reflect on what you're thankful for or grateful for uh, can be a very good driver of happiness in your life because sometimes you get caught up in these temporary states of stress or anxiety and you realize how many good things uh, are, are happening personally, professionally, and also just still in this world today, no matter how much sometimes it doesn't seem that way. Um, I had a, a really good moment with a person the other day uh, who sort of you know, walked through the journey of speak and basically this time in, so you talked about like Christmas or like this time of year. In 2020, it was like we had a team meeting and I think it was like seven or eight of us at the time. I was like, guys, we have like two months. <laughs> you know what I mean? Things are going not that well. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, 
it was like we had a great sort of year end Christmas sort of get together with the team. But at the same time, it was like, this is so stressful right now. And, and then in, and then to make things worse, you know, move to Toronto month, a half in COVID happens and like all that investment to move time and all this stuff just, and, and then, you know, a couple of weeks later when we really realized what was happening, get a call and, and get, you know, all my customers who I've been great relationships with who have mortar, you know, brick and mortar locations say, Tyler, I can't honor these contracts anymore. We just don't know what's going to happen. And literally, I think lost like 80% of revenue in like one and a half months. And there was a person who I was talking to and sort of just sharing sort of this journey and how I was, you know, planning on self-funding this with consulting and service revenue. And, you know, it's just saying how like we're, you know, feel better than ever. We're excited about the future. And he's like, yeah, no shit. Like it, you would have quit if it, if, you know, in 2020 when that happened, other, you know, like other, you guys are maybe, it, I, I don't think it's out of the stupidity. It's just like ambition and drive and love for what you're doing and the knowledge and validation that you're doing something right. Even if, you know, you still want to hit growth milestones and still have a lot of work ahead. So that was, that was just a great moment um, to realize how much resilience it takes to get to a place and actually feel going into Christmas, going into this holidays, still so much work to do but much more not on the brink of you know like oh my god you know, like I, I and and so for myself this year also very I never exactly understood but like I saw people achieving personal and professional things at once and sometimes it's about what you're prioritizing in life and I was lucky enough with my partner to also get a house this year I got a dog which I wanted a dog for so long. You know what I mean? Some of these things that I, in my mind, I had sort of mentally blocked out because I just thought it wasn't possible. And it's like, you can always bring more love into your life. You can always um, do personal things that you're ambitious about. And because if your professional work is getting in the way of that, there's no point uh, of it. And, and, and so you have these sort of mindset shifts. And for me, the you know pandemic has been a big driver. And I think for many of us, our perspective of life, of what we want to be accomplishing, where we want to spend our time. And also just thankful for you. I'm thankful for some of the best things that have ever happened to me is when I found someone who I've wanted to work with, and then we've worked together and it's worked well. And so, you know, Lauren was one of the first like Lauren was the first like really good hire I made who actually helped and made my life easier. And then I met Vatsal and then, you know, I've had lots of good co-ops and interns along the way, but then, you know, meeting you this year and, uh, you know, connected right away and, you know, very grateful to bring you on the team and that you wanted to be part of it. And then also to see the impact that you've made both from obviously like technical execution and SEO rankings and things like that, but also just messaging and thinking about things and strategically, you know, how we proceed. So I'm very, um, grateful for that and just in lastly just like what do we look forward to what do I look forward to is a strong foundation that we set continuing to drive us and uh now being in this position of I would say still a lot of ways work to do to sort of you know monetize it and generate revenue in the right way but also to be in a position of abundance of opportunities um and that's a really it's fun to be in, it's more fun to be in an abundance opportunities and having to selectively pick the right ones than no opportunities and just desperately hoping that something uh, will come. So that's been a, a I'm, I'm feel very blessed about that and excited to bring that into 2020, 22, sorry, 2022. I appreciate Thanks. that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's great. And, and I do think that's something for us to definitely look forward to as well, where, uh, I think we're trending towards, uh, you know, uh, the abundance versus the scarcity side, which is which is good, uh, and hope hope to just keep growing that way. Because uh, I, I think we always run into this issue of, you know, available capital sometimes, like it, that that can be reinvested into the business uh, beyond operating expenses. And I think the more opportunities that present themselves to us that go beyond, you know, just trying to get VC money and trying to get investment and, you know, uh, the more we can build out the system to not even maybe need external investment. I think that that would be like an ultimate, ultimate win, right? Because like, I, I, you know, as, as an owner, like you own the company and it's like, I'm sure your dream would be to just bootstrap it all the way, right? So it's like, however close we can get to that, I think that 
that is almost always the ultimate entrepreneur or like business owner dream, right? Um, like if it's if it's not something that you're just trying to flip quickly, you want to own as much authority and decision making power and just you know ability to build the company and culture that you want to build um, without taking you know too much too much external pressure. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, growing towards that I think is going to be a great uh, great next step for us. Yeah, and even in that, on that note, Carol, it's like my thought process of that sort of wanes mm -hmm. based on obviously the information that you see day to day, the stories you hear from founders who've had good experiences, bad experiences, and then, you know, you getting a term sheet and seeing what terms could be in there versus then, you know, talking to a much more aligned strategic angel investor who it feels like a, a strategic relationship and capital that's, um, you know, part could be part of the business. So um what I really want, and, and I think all of us crave this, it, and it's one of the things that we talk about, even if you're, say, you're a developer, or really talented people, and you're going into certain jobs, and you're looking at the highest salary, right? But like, what you're trying to do, especially when still, you know, pretty early in our careers, and lots of opportunity to grow is like, maximize learning experiences, like maximize how quickly you can learn it for that. To me, it's like being around the brightest people. And uh, that's something I mean, we're lucky with a small team, but I just want to continue to have at least relationships with those. And that's why, you know, I had the meeting with a, a, a wonderful man yesterday who looked, looked to be on the advisory, wants to be an advisory board, and deep, you know, 25, 30 years of experience selling, uh, you know, chief revenue officer in, in, in like large scale um, companies, uh, and then a lot of them being machine learning AI based. So it's like that person is a wealth, like just talking to that person is a wealth of knowledge that I can learn so much from in 15 minutes. One of the amazing recommendation, recommendations he made was to have um, a channel in your Slack um, be an advisor channel. So what, I, what he recommended there was like that now he has done that with one of the companies he's in, and now he's actually built relationships with the other advisors of that company. So it's a very worthwhile exchange of sort of networking and you know con uh, connections. So I just thought that was a really interesting uh, insight from someone who's advising some, some good companies right now. I don't know how I got on this. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if you want to redirect me back into. Uh, <laughs> no, I, th I think that, um, so. Just feeding off that initial your interview, I guess. Uh, maybe you can start here. Uh, you know, your top three moments and milestones uh, specific to uh, speak and the growth you've seen um, uh, this year? I, uh, it's hard, right? You just mm -hmm, like, it's mm -hmm, still, mm -hmm. it's definitely still doing this processing of all this stuff and uh, things, especially in the last bit, because it's sort of personal stuff. It's like all moving very quickly. Yeah. Uh, but for me, what it comes down to at the end has been, um, when we get to like two things of like, when we get a, a message from a customer who just says like this solved something for mm -hmm. them. One, one, one sticks out. Someone said like, this was uh, like, she gained clarity and it felt like a miracle, mm -hmm. you know, like that. And, and also in that regards, people who were in her system, pushing it to the brink mm -hmm. of what we wanted, wanting to do. So we love again, all everyone equally, but I love these people who come in and say, you know, I'm trying to extract this with this. And it's like, I, that's the stuff that gets me so excited. And we had a couple uh, of really good moments um, for that this year. Um, I, and this is selfish for myself, but I, it's like, I really, even if they're sort of concepts, I've been really excited about some of these, you know, sort of demo prototype visualizations and getting some good feedback on them too. Um, and some of them is, yeah, sort of like ego inducing of like people like, oh, that's really cool. But in some other cases, it's been much more of a, a validating of like, if we can build this into the company that there's value uh, of it. And uh, last one, can I think of a last one? I really enjoy these office hours, to be honest. We just had some great moments as, as a team just discussing this. And I've learned a lot from this. And it's like, even on a, you know, on a Friday coming up to holidays, I'm like, I look forward to that because we get to sort of break down a lot of the, you know, bear, not that we have that many barriers as a team, but um, sort of have this channel where we can all sort of publicly address things that we're thinking or excited about and um, i've just we've had some great laughs and some great also some very intense conversations in these calls that i think have made us better as a team and just even individual as people agreed um 
I guess if I were to think of three, uh, well, one joining, I, I think that's big. That's a big milestone. <laughs> uh, the next one I think was those initial points of validation when you know we ran specific experiments and they resulted in being incredibly successful acquisition channels for us. I think that was that was a second uh, really really high point and and you see that sustained impact right like even now what eight months down the line you still see uh like s some of those experiments we ran are still some of our highest performing pages uh and it's, it's not like all the leads coming through like a lot of the leads coming through those have also like converted and have had conversations with us and have given us feedback which is great um a, th a third milestone, I guess, would be the the shift that I I feel uh, within the team as a whole, uh, moving towards this user centric, and you know how do we? Obviously, a lot of what we do is complicated, uh, but you know it, it would be kind of selfish of us to just dismiss the people that don't understand it right away. So, you know, we've, we've kind of shifted maybe from this top level technical mindset, which I mean, we still have, and we still work with people that might have that mindset, but also, uh, you know, democratizing and this, this process of language analysis and data discovery, right. Helping people that don't have the time, like, like we've had conversations about yeah, to learn R and to learn Python and build out your own data visualization and find insights into things, whether that's for work or personally. Uh, and I think the, the changes we've made uh, on the platform and how we maybe approach talking to customers, uh, how we actively take that feedback and integrate it into our platform and our platform experience. I think that's been another another huge moment for us uh, that you know we're still learning and we'll just continue to get get better at um also intercom's just been intercom's amazing yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's and it, yeah like the one part you sort of said which is it feels i mean obviously that's what most people are looking for in life in some ways it's like validation and it feels really good to have a theory or a hypothesis and put that into action and see that you were at least somewhat right. Like we've had that, whether it's been landing pages, the alternatives, um, some of the tools that we put together, uh, like even some things that were like, there wasn't that much data around, maybe say we look at SEM Rush and we see there's not much search volume around here, but just something feels like, and, and there's this underpinning growing uh, search or people trying to solve this problem that, um, you know, if, if we were, if, like always listen to data, but also sometimes that intuition can help drive things and help you get discoveries that you, you know, won't want to understand. And we had that conversation with that team the other day where they're like, yeah, we're putting out some content that there's no search volume for, but we're getting a lot of traffic to these pages. And that I think is something that we sort of underestimate sometimes is that if you're deep in enough that you can feel movements happening and then you can see validation through the data and, and pieces there. So that's been great. And sometimes it's not right away. Sometimes we've had moments where it's like put up a page and then, oh my God, right. And, and other times, like, again, even this recorder uh, was, it took six months to even come to fruition at all. And then probably another six months to actually drive business. Um, so that, that delay is tough, but uh, you have to get used to sort of trusting your intuition, um, you know, doing your best to analyze and optimize and go, and then also just being patient with results uh, sometimes there. And just like, Quickly, I um, you sort of talked about intercom there, and like one of the things I'm thinking about too in this year, this year, um, which is like just like inspiration, like what inspired me in 2021. And there's a couple like things that really um, you know stuck out. So I'll just touch on a couple of those quickly, and I'd be interested to hear if there's anything from your perspective. And uh, and. Like, I hope we can actually publish some more official uh, content and resources around this. But like one, some of them are these like natural language processing companies that are today. And especially I'm really like grateful for um, John Snow Labs and then Hugging Face who are building like these incredible open source communities for 
uh, sort of, you know, for machine learning and natural language processing. And what I love about them too is they're putting actually a significant amount of work. Like what I love, I got this wrap up email from Jon Snow is they're becoming a carbon, they're now officially a carbon neutral company. Because one of the critiques of uh, sort of artificial intelligence is that it's, you know, it takes up so many resources. So for them to put that effort into it. And then I saw at a conference hugging face, um, I believe one of their CEOs, like one of their CEO, like could have talked about anything to promote his company. And he chose to talk about bias in machine learning models. So I think that that's really amazing that there's like leaders in the space who are talking about like really important issues within this kind of work, also building open source communities and trying to also offset the, the cost that could be coming possible with it. And just a couple other quick things like, I was lucky to go to Miami. Miami is an amazing city and saw some amazing like interactive light shows and exhibits. So Super Blue was really a mind blowing experience and sort of this layer of interactivity and you know you being there and touching something on the wall, personalizing the experience for you. And just that overwhelming power of feeling that you're not just participating in experience, but you're contributing to the experience or modifying it like that. That is something that, again, maybe it seems disconnected from what we're doing at Speak, but it's, to me, it's not. It's like, how can we help people be active parts of their own journey of discovery, whether that's visualization or analysis or things like that. And even just two last things were like, that's what bought me uh, these lights, uh, Gove home lights. And they're just like able to basically purse like millions of combinations of lights that you can personalize and they have fire and ambiance and all these different things. And even has ones that are responsive to your voice or music that you're playing. And I just think that there's this, this real time interaction layer that is possible is uh, something I hope to bring into speak into 2022. Uh, so, so a couple of things uh, that are really inspiring me right now. And it's always about taking sort of maybe more abstract ideas or inspirations or passions and bringing them into practical use cases. But I, I don't want to get disconnected from that's, you know, a, a vision, like in a way I'm a child, you know, and I want to be able to accomplish these things through the vessel of of speak that is sustainable as a business, but still allows us to explore and have fun and play and unlock, you know, inspiration and creativity and all these things. So that's my uh, romantic uh, rant uh, uh, there. No, I mean, uh, I think a lot of these community-based initiatives and projects are, I mean, the fantastic, right? And, and it, it, just the the awareness and, um, let's get, uh, you know, like, I feel like I'm going to use this word again, but they are in a way democratizing access and understanding uh, more than, you know, because e even for people that don't maybe know how to execute on it, I feel like a lot of the stuff they put out and create at least gives you a sense of the possibilities. And then, you know, you can find someone that can actually help you implement it and use that to solve problems to solve whether that's your personal problems, you know, like if you want to build a SaaS product, whatever it is. Um, and I, I think when you build some of these community-based initiatives, the great thing is it, it's, it's almost like you get an unlimited workforce to build your company for you. Mm, right. Yeah. Wh which is, which is, a powerful, powerful thing. And it's, it's not exploitative because, you know, a lot of times these are like, th there's value provided to these individuals or to these collectives that maybe to them, the money isn't, you know, like it's not about getting reimbursed. It's about spreading the wealth of knowledge, right? Spreading the um, power that a lot of NLP uh, tech and uh, AI uh, can, can bring to the world. So you know, it would be amazing if we can find a way to build something like that around the work we do or the work we want to do as well. Uh, but, you know, that's something for us to, to figure out if we are prioritizing that. Because the last thing you want to do is, you know, make like a half-assed effort to yeah. build any sort of community-based initiative. Because at least when you're doing copywriting or landing pages or marketing type of material like a lot of times yes you are providing value for an end user you are trying to be as user-friendly as possible but 
your accountability uh, really stops within the company a lot of the times versus when you make this move to do more community-based initiatives. Now you, you add like a, a time commitment uh, that goes beyond, okay, you know, like I, I need to deliver on this project because community building is never ending. Right. It's hard. It's, and it's hard to get it to this threshold where it's self-generating. It, exactly. You yeah. know, without any intervention. Exactly. Um, and then at some point when it does get then, then, you know, in a very delicate way, there needs to be some sort of moderator or, you know, someone who is at least like guiding that community mm-hmm. in the right place. Cause you can see I'm part of many communities, some personal, some professional, some are very weird. Um, but, you know, you can see what happens when, uh, also people with diff- from different walks of life with different intentions come in. So I think that's one challenge that we've faced, which is even within our product, sometimes there's very different intentions that people come in. So how do we unify them? What is the unifier that would build um, our community? And just one quick thing that I think you said, which is really beautiful, which is like, um, maybe I've said this before, I don't know, but it's like this the idea of like the four minute mile, which was like, on, like not something that anyone could accomplish. And then all of a sudden one person accomplished and then everyone started breaking that record. So I think there's something so powerful about just seeing something being accomplished and realize it's possible. Uh, and um, you know, this is again, me romanticizing here, but it's just like one thing I've seen this year that I'm just so grateful for is like, people sort of having these sort of breakthrough experiences using speak. Like again, transcription being one vessel that a saying that you said, I think the other day, it's like almost like a Trojan horse um, to then unlock the other things that are possible. And we're not tricking anyone. It's just fun to be part of that process where it's like, oh my God, I, I just wanted speech to text. And now I realize what these guys are doing. And this is this is very, very interesting. So those those moments are some of the most exciting, uh, exciting things to me. And I'm, I'm hoping to foster even more of that in, in 2022. Um, I would say like, it's been a huge year in general for voice, for conversational AI, for natural language processing. like especially with this exponential increase of audio and video and digitally captured conversations, like the, the more information than ever is being generated and the need to sort of find these moments or try to make sense of it is very, very valuable. And so we're doing our best to do it. There was one quote I think I shared in the Slack group the other day that was, oh, it's hit so hard though. It was like uh, that John, I think it was from John Snow Labs again. And it's like, mm, uh, like entities and keyword spotting are no longer enough. Like what you need to be doing is far beyond that now. You need to be doing predictive, uh, you know, helping people predict things or again, find those patterns or themes or one of the ongoing conversations we have is like, just finding a brand isn't good enough. You need to know the sentence and overall, what was the sentiment around that brand? Like there's so much more that needs to be unlocked that we have a lot of work to do. At least we're aware. Uh, uh, but um, you know, those moments of sort of shortcomings of our own system, or shortcomings of the technology in the space in general, and then also finding that there are a lot of people struggling with these problems this year, and they're important problems. Like they're not just like surface. That's like, in some ways, it's niche, but if they have it, it's like a very painful thing that they're trying to solve. And it's good to be in a space where people are t- willing to share those tr- troubles with you and at least have this idea that you might be able to help and ideally, ideally we can. Yep, agreed. Okay. Um, where are we at? 12.41, I just want to, let me see. <sighs> I am, you know, I'm interested. You talked about getting better, sort of talking, uh, getting better at talking about our product and lucky enough to have sort of the sales coach and advisor helping a lot of times me going, sort of reviewing these calls and still the feedback that I'm getting is like more structure, less talk about product features, more talk about solutions, more uh, getting people to describe pain points in a more intimate way. Also not up to you to push people, up for them to, um, want to move forward without that, you know, without, because one thing I'm, I'm not, and this is maybe the reason why I don't, we don't always grow as quick. I'm not a very pushy salesperson. You know, I'm like, so this fits, you know, I hope it works for you. But, uh, uh, you know, I think there is a method to help people have those 
breakthroughs of, um, oh, you know, this is a trusted, you know, a team we can trust with software that we can trust or that we, you know, is continually improving that we can work with and um, can provide value in its current state, but it seems like there's also a roadmap ahead that will continue um, to create value. And so that's something that I'm really sort of reviewing and moderating myself on, reflecting on this year. Um, like what are those those things that we're we're solving and, and and just on this last note this is i guess i feel like taking christmas spirit out of this but like uh, just it's like this radical my, my term is now like radical prioritization of time uh and i think this is something for you this is something for me this is something for our whole team where it's like we're all smart people our time is worthwhile if we are like you could do anything with the time yeah, what, what are you so what are you choosing to do with it and um you know where do you want to make that impact especially for you you know you're getting ready to have, move into a house you know i'm doing that i could spend time with my you're saying with you, you could spend time with your partner I could spend time with my partner I could roll around on the floor with my dog you know like there's all these choices that you're making so it's like if i'm going to put myself fully engaged and make it you know try to make an impact in in work that makes a positive impact on the people i love around me including you and the team that we work with um then I really need to prioritize things. So that's something I'm thinking about uh, this year. And I guess maybe just from your perspective too, like we'd love to share like, or hear your thoughts on like, how do we do that? Like how, where do you see our breakdowns in prioritization and how can we do a better job making sure that we're putting our efforts in the right place? So I think the number one uh thing that we've done and you know it really is a double-edged sword sometimes because you you do want to be as helpful as possible and i guess uh you know th there is that whole do things that don't scale um philosophy uh when you're starting out and when you're trying to gain traction uh so i i still do think there is merit to doing that but you know to some of the points that we've heard and uh with respect to maybe taking a bit more time to qualify and think about the end result from a business perspective, where if you sink, not sink, but if you, you know, if you do spend 10, 20 hours helping someone uh, with a problem or helping them solve a, like build a solution that works for them is the end payout uh, you know, with respect to your business growth and with respect to, let's just say at a very baseline revenue growth, um, has it contributed to a, to a satisfactory level? Um, and if it hasn't, then, you know, you, you, it's fine. You chalk it up as a loss and you make a point to not invest unnecessary time uh, into uh, initiatives that might not have the same sort of pay that we're hoping to have, right? So I, I think to do that too, there needs to be some sort of set level in your in your head or my head or you know whoever's just talking to clients or talking to leads, where in order for this engagement to be worthwhile to us, right? It, like to make the best use of my time, um, is there a certain threshold that this would need to qualify for, right? Is it a uh, is it a yearly engagement? Is it a six month custom project? Is it, you know, consultation fees, whatever it is. Um, and by prioritizing, you know, what, what are maybe some of our targets when it comes to even talking to customers? Uh, I think we'll, we'll slowly get better at, I guess, radical prioritization, because we'll start seeing patterns uh, in terms of okay, you know, like I really enjoy talking to this specific type of uh, customer or person that comes across our product, but very often they are just curious minds like me, right? They're not actually yeah. looking for a solution or they're not actually looking to pay for a solution, right? Um, and, you know, obviously from a personal pr perspective, you love to help them, but when it comes to uh, doing what's best for your business as well, uh, I, I think that's where some of the responsibility needs to uh, be solidified in your head as well, right? Because it, it, it's it's funny because my so the, the company my dad works at, right? He's been there since I mean, it's it's funny to say, but he he was an intern there at forty four, 
right? <laughs> so it's like he started this company, and you know, at the time they were maybe I don't know, a couple hundred k in rev revenue, right? So, but in the past ten years that he's been, or eleven years, however long he's been there, um, he's essentially helped them. Like they just had their largest year yet, right? Uh, like something like twelve x their revenue since he he started with them, um, and a lot of that came through him teaching his boss um, how to better prioritize and you know uh, be more efficient with how they take orders or how they're uh, communicating with suppliers, right? How they're communicating with all these different aspects that make the business run. Um, and obviously at the end of the day, you want to help everyone. You want to take as many clients on as you can. You want to, uh, you, you want to be someone's like superhero, right? But you can't, right? It's, it's just not feasible, especially as a CEO, founder, a business owner. Um, you, you need to think about, you know, the business, your responsibility to yourself, your responsibility to current and future employee employees uh, and you know your responsibilities to the other people in your life that um, also you know whatever decisions you make on this front have that kind of butterfly effect right where it affects all the different elements of your life and at the end of the day you don't want to be stuck in a place where you know you 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 can see all the decisions that led to where you are and you're like damn if only yeah. i had like chosen better <laughs> right um, yeah, yeah. But, but, but the positive side is that I think we have gotten better at doing that, uh, even internally, where I think maybe in the past we were a bit more ambitious and eager and, you know, like, oh, let's try all these different things. But now it's like, okay, we've decided on a path we're going to follow. And I think we've gotten really good at just following that path, um, but obviously also pivoting and uh, adjusting the direction we're going in depending on what comes what opportunities present themselves to us uh, yeah. well and we have a you know in a good way a curious team right and uh i know that's when i specifically especially early days have gone above and beyond to try to solve a problem for someone because not only do of course we hope that they become a customer but we also just love it you know like this is oh this is so interesting like let's let's get this done and then you realize you spent 10 hours for someone to sign up for a $99 plan. And you're like, oh, you know, cause you get this thing in your head, which you realize, which is tainted by the venture capital market and some of the things that we see, which is like software revenue is more valuable than anything. And um, in a way it is, but say you just give incredible support all the way to the sign up. guess what's expected? as they continue to use the software, right? So say you do that, like say, you know, you spend five hours helping someone on board and then they give you a $1,200 a year plan. It's not worth it, you know, especially like, it's sad to say, it's like, maybe it is when you can have a bigger team and you have more capacity and you, you know, you're, you're doing it, but like, you know, and this is no one's fault, but I, I, it's my own fault. It's like, I, you know, just on a call uh, sometime this week at like 8.45 at night talking to a team going over, go, you know, giving like, they're there with my best heart and answering questions, making them feel excited and confident. Um, but it's like, all these questions are on our website. You know, all of these are in the videos that uh, resources that I sent you. Like this, that was a tough moment. Like a couple of days before, you know, a few days before the holidays, it's like, I'm getting kicked around here uh, again, because I'm a good person and I want to help, but this, this isn't necessarily going to go anywhere. And also this can't be what's expected of us moving forward, especially if you're going to say use five hours a month and $49, it's just unfeasible. And that's a sad thing. It's like, I wish you could be five people at once and, and, and do it. But, you know, I'm in the same boat. I'm like, I just, I just want to go spend, I've, I've, I've already had 10 hours, 10 and a half hours today. Let's just spend some, I want to go back and, and uh, watch Tom Segura, um, you know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so those those things are hard, and it's just like also the other part I'm trying to figure out, which is, I mean, one of the trends you've seen, I know you've seen it, is like we get a lot of people who are early in this journey um, mm -hmm. of trying to embed speech to text and natural language processing into their system, and with that comes just a lot of questions that are good, all very valuable questions, 
but um, not necessarily the cap capacity to eat. Like I know how hard it is for us to do the capacity to execute on tasks because we have a small team. These are a lot of times startups. Some of them are funded. Some of them are not, you know, bootstrapping it. And it's like, it's hard to make everyone happy in that situation. And often what we're finding is like when it gets down to the actual final details of cost or they're, you know, oh, it's actually, wow, it's actually complex to uh, integrate with these APIs. It's like, now we just spent five, say five hours trying to help you get set up and it didn't convert to anything. Or the other part where it's like a lot of people just talking to different vendors, trying to figure out what's the best mm -hmm. option here. That's why I love our alternatives page. Um, it's like, how can we turn, take this from an in-person or one-on-one -on -one conversation and turn it into a link that's shared? Or I type on intercom, you know, speak versus uh, symbol AI. And I can figure out the exact breakdown and say, oh, speaks the right one for me or oh, simple AI without having to have that conversation. Not that we don't want to talk to people, but there's these scalable challenges there. And I, like you said, that sort of do things that don't scale, but at this point we're actually trying to scale. <laughs> so uh, you have to um, at least be talking to the right people when you're doing unscalable mm -hmm. uh, things. So um, like, like it's, it's almost like sometimes you wonder about you know, in, in terms of the support you provide. And obviously you want to help everyone, but, you know, you, you, you come from an agency background and it's like, if someone were to ask you for marketing help, you're not consulting for free. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so why, why would process or implementation be different? Right. Um, Cause I'm pretty sure most enterprise solutions or most companies where it's not just top line support, any sort of custom demo calls oh, or, sure. are yeah. all charged, right? Yeah. So I, I, I don't, I think it's getting over this um, self-imposed barrier of not, not, not valuing your time, but I think because you value people, you don't want to put, you know, like a cost to helping someone. Yeah. But unfortunately in the world of business, I think there's a cost, yeah. it, there's a cost to anything, right? Like even if you wanted to consult it, right? You, you go hire someone to like audit your website. There's a cost. You want someone to like help you automate your workflows. There's a cost, right? So uh, just the mental, the mental of knowing the mental. there's a meeting coming up exactly. and you're preparing for that. And you're yeah. now have like, cause I show up at a meeting and I care, yeah. you yeah. know, and I know you do too. It's like, I'm not just showing up with no thought about that yeah. before, no prep. There's, there's a, there's a, a 45 minute meeting can actually be two and a half hours exactly. of mental and, you know, and that's not fair. Time, like prep time. Yeah. I, had, I had a moment the other day from a, a person on the more marketing side asked about um, some, you know, can I take a look at, you know, take a look. I'm not going to quote this exactly, but it's basically like, you know, uh, you know, take a look with through the our analytics, get familiar with it, start to, I'm like, do you know how many analytics systems I've walked in through my life? I don't need time to get familiar with this, you know, let's we'll spend an hour just warming up to the data. No. <laughs> so it's like, I know to value my time in that. There's something that is this mental switch and it's been triggered towards the end of this year here where it's like, because I've been building, you know, speak and like, I still feel like we're these early sort of entering this space. It's like, mm -hmm. I'll go be beyond, but it's like, I can't, you know? And so I, it's been a, it's been a sort of, a, a, I mean, I go through this every year. I have this revelation at the end of the year where I'm like, you know, uh, but at the same time, it, it, every year we get better and better. And I think we more than doubled revenue this year, which is fantastic. And I want to see that continue. So the only way to do that is continue to prioritize uh, and, and do these things right. And just from that perspective, like one other thing that we have, which is this demo booking on our site. And then even I have my Calendly, I know you have your Calendly. Like I, I really was um, fanatical. That's not the right word. Uh, but like, I basically blocked out any mornings. I don't take meetings in the morning uh, because I just I care about our morning kickoffs and then I need a, a flow session. But, uh, but then also like, I increasingly put more and more requests in my calendar bookings of what you need to share with me before I'm willing to jump on a call. We don't really do that in the same way through the speak demo. And I think that's another piece where it's like, okay, yes, we want to give you a demo and yes, we want to walk you through. But in order to know that it's like, 
you know, when, you know, what's your company? When's, you know, but how many minutes do you think you're going to do? Have you even thought about that? You know, what kind of like, it doesn't, we want, don't want it to be in order to like unruly amount of work things, but we also want it to be enough where we're willing to see that you're thought about this carefully and you're, um, you're willing to put in a little bit of effort because you're truly interested in this solution instead of the, I guess the term is tire kickers, yeah. uh, which is a, a mean term, but I, I had that experience in my marketing agency yeah. where people just, ah, la, la, la. I'm, being mean. <laughs> I'm being mean before Christmas, but I'm, you know, I, I'm going into Christmas with a vengeance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I think that's, that's perfectly valid because, you know, we've seen it with our, because, you know, right now we're, we're seeing this, this really nice spike in user acquisition, but I still feel that you know, the actual data we get from these individuals is not particularly useful to us to make any yeah. meaningful decisions. Um, and, you know, obviously with the user acquisition, it, it's, it's okay. Like it's, it, I mean, we still want to improve it, but it's not as impactful versus I do think for something like a demo call, it basically needs to be like, give us a brief and yeah. then we'll take look at this brief and then decide if you need our help or not more or yeah. less right well and, and we, at the start i feel like at the start on our onboarding we had more useful answers in our onboarding now i look through the last and it's people just like get, get me in here you know what i mean like i don't so that part i really i'm pulling the plug on our onboarding setup right now and seeing that our product tours through intercom god intercom is getting a lot of free plugs through speak mm -hmm. i hope you continue our startup package um to, to the video <laughs> intercom please uh yes, yes. uh um uh but uh you know that to me i'm now seeing like i don't know if you saw that screenshot i posted in slack but you mm -hmm. can see that people are actually completing the dashboard tour mm -hmm. pretty decent com completion percentage and it's like why not just let them do that and forcing yeah. them into this flow at the start and then probably some work on our dashboard here to make it a better first uh landing page but um ah uh, one quick part too is what i what i've realized is qualifying investors um too same way that sales yeah. it's like first of all it shows that you're you're careful with your time so that there's a, a level of um you know, respect that that's good. If I'm an investor and da, 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 da. but also there's people at different stages investing in different things. So, yeah. boo. And then even something that I've run into where I'm like seeing a company, an investor that has uh, directly invested in who someone would consider a competitor. Right. And so it's like this conversation they might find interesting, but it's not going to go anywhere. Right. It's like literally they can't invest in conflicting companies in their portfolio. So did, did they like, I guess the question there is, did they know and still hopped on the call or? Well, they came through. I mean, it's nice that they were generally again, interested in meetings. So it's hard to say no, especially if it's a, a well-respected firm. But um, it's like they could make that assumption if they did enough due do, do yeah. diligence. But I, you know, it was very obvious as we got deeper into a call. And now this has happened twice, where it's like this is too competitive with one of the companies that we've invested in already. So, so I almost feel like we need to do like a, like you said, investor onboarding or sale investor qualifying sheet right where yeah. we can make it up front like you know this is what we are so you know perhaps if you you have a portfolio with similar companies it might pose a problem right like yeah. like little like uh disclaimers that yeah. would let people like you know decide whether they still want to invest it, time into the engagement so. it, it shows you're an amateur too if you show up to a meeting and you don't like for example one company and i didn't even end up in the meeting with but only invest in the midwest of the united states i'm not gonna take a meeting with them you know what i mean or one's uh a minimum check size is three million dollars and it's like we're not trying to raise that much so it's gonna be pretty hard for them to shove three million dollars into our our round right so um those things are other qualifiers that generally firms that are especially good firms try to share up front or on their website as resources so that you're not, they don't want to waste time too. These people are valuable and trying to run other uh, uh, companies too. So again, you know, we started off all warm and fuzzy, ended up with me yelling on, uh, on uh, this, but uh, it's a fun time. So I am, uh, I appreciate you sticking with me through it. I guess anything else that you're thinking of before we wrap this up, I know we're at 1 PM here. Uh, let me think. I guess for, for the new year, if we were to set like a, I mean, I don't know how, how, how much this would hold, hold up in a court of law, but just, you know, like a, a major KPI that we'd love to hit, right? Uh, whatever that might be, like, uh, or, or a major product 
uh, evolution that we want to see in, let's say, the first six months of next year. Uh, what what does that look like to you? This is um, so it's hard for me to say that, but because I, I know that it's ambitious, and then also don't necessarily like to just quantify success by numbers but like for me one of the things because i see it's in your linkedin profile it's in some of the conversations i have with investors like i want to get to a million arr you know what i mean there's something magical about that number in in everyone's mind like of the team internal teams but also from an outside perspective and then you then are know that you're deep enough that you're producing value so uh, that's my goal million ARR um, I would love to see that unlocked and you know again the only way to get there that is not something that's unfeasible it's just going to take radical radical prioritization so uh, that that's my answer to you yeah, you? Uh, yeah I, I think that's just a general initial milestone um, from my side as well where you know, uh, it's it's been nice to see the growth and impact that uh, I've been able to have this year, uh, and obviously it, it's played into you know revenue to a degree as well. Um, but finding a way to, as a team and as a product, to get to that that mark, I think, would be a great testament to a the product we're building, uh, and also just you know the. I guess the marketing acumen that we as a as a yeah. product team have, um, because considering that we don't, considering that we've done most of this organically, right? I think that's yeah. that's great. Um, so how do we kind of ramp that up uh, for next year and kind of kind of set set ourselves up for success? And you know, everyone always likes to get reimbursed more paid yeah. more, yeah. Right? more more perks whatever yeah, it is yeah. um so you know making life better for our team uh i, I think is also just it's, it's all tied to that right yeah. um like whether we want to improve our product whether we want to improve the lives of our team members whether we want to just reach more people everything has a cost yeah. and i think finding a way to make that cost more uh manageable for us as, as, as a team. I think that that would be a, a really nice milestone for us to hit. So I, I guess we're aligned on that. <laughs> well, and, and for, you know, to, to break it down a little bit, to think a million dollars is around $83,000 $83, a month. So in 2021, we hit 35K one month. Um, now, some of that was consulting and marketing basis, but uh, to me, and I, I want to continue to limit that, but um, you know what? Uh, for every month that we don't accomplish that, um, you know, front up, then we need to uh, you know, make up for it on the back end. So, uh, you know, there's the quicker we prioritize, the better. And also the way we, sh you know, again, market our message and position our company, the way that we do sales outreach, the, the content that we publish on the site, the, the keywords that we advertise on. Uh, all of that, um, you know, has a huge impact on that. And, you know, I, I set this up with this goal up with the, earlier conversation of what we had which is everything seems to lag behind around six months to a year mm -hmm. but the more you can take your dreams and ambitions and get those to line mm -hmm. up in real time uh with when you want those timelines the more confidence you have in life the more confidence other people are going to have in you and when you know ideally you can speak something and turn it into a reality and that's that's what i hope uh, that we can do this year and i'll just add one last note to that it was like one thing i was really excited this this week the help of Vatzel and Nevedita. Vatzel was on a well-deserved vacation with his family mm -hmm. before he left built in a bunch of things that allowed him to go on that vacation. And that's what I also want to see, uh, which is let's remove these things that are redundant so that we can focus on high value, high impact mm -hmm. tasks. Uh, so that that's a big part of this journey and aligning with that million dollar uh, revenue goal. Um, so yeah. I feel good. That, that's, I think, a good way to end it. Any, yep. any other? Yep. Okay. No, I, I guess happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Uh, 
whatever else is out there. Everything, anything you celebrate. Yeah, <laughs> anything we, celebrate. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, uh, we love you. Appreciate you for joining uh, this. We're, we're going to share this out to YouTube. One thing that, again, probably probably not the biggest part of it, I want to get these on our podcasts mm-hmm. uh, into like the actual channels there. We'll say this is my own selfish thing. I re-release some of my music and I'm seeing some plays on Spotify, uh, nice. over a thousand on a couple of tunes nice. and, uh, nice. made, uh, almost 200 bucks last month. Uh, so that was very, from, from, yeah, from Spotify and YouTube. Really? I was like, Holy shit. Really? Yeah. I was what, like, what's wow. your channel? What's your, uh, it's, it's because of um, a couple of YouTubers who included my song, I think, into their intros and they actually get a ton of views. And huh. so then it's just, I'm like, holy shit, you know, 200 bucks uh, a month just for that, uh, from this thing I made in 2013 or whatever. It's so hilarious. Anyways, I should have ended on that. That was just, are, are, I was are, just saying, are you going to plug your, no. uh, your channel? No. no. Merry, Merry <laughs> Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Mm-hmm. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>